Hi, you're watching Spirit of Life. I'm Norm Curry. I'm your host for today. We'll be engaging in a love dialogue as we always do, discovering where love arises in your day. And we'll be speaking with Pascal Yi, who's a young man who's had some experience of love moving in his life. Thanks for coming in, Pascal. Thanks for having me, Norm. You always said you're a young man, and clearly you are. They can see that and confirm that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're Mauritian. Yep. You're Catholic. Yes. Yeah. And that's as much of your story as I'm going mm. to tell. You can tell the rest yeah. of it. Yeah. Where does it go from there, mate? So, yeah, so I, I was baptized as a Catholic uh, as mm -hmm. a baby. And it was always mum who brought us to, to Mass every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And thanks to, our, to my dad you know, driving us you know, every Sunday to Mass and back and forth. So I was, you know really good of him even mm. though he was a practicing the faith but he was still encouraging us to you know to, to, to practice our that. faith so yeah that was that's, good on him that's so, good yeah that's good and mm. so did you did what's the catholic religion religion like it, it, is it is it uh, strong in mauritius well i think when i was in mauritius you know for for about 19 years mm. um, yeah so the mass you know people were you know, Praising God, there were. I, I really remember the you know, the peace I could always feel when I went to mass, and also the, all the music. Yes. E even yeah. until like, until now, I can still remember the music they used to sing. Some were in Creole yeah. language, some were in French. Yeah. So yeah, between these two, I, I remember was 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 hymns like wow, beautiful, and mm. so yeah, so it was it was good to to recall that. Yeah. How do you think that multicultural sort of component mm -hmm. in Mauritius, uh, yeah. it, it's pretty strong, isn't it? Yes. Uh, the imprint that that's made on you, do you feel you carry something from that? Yeah, especially the, the, the music, because music was one way through the language of Creole you know, to kind yeah. of unite the, the different communities, different faith together. Mm. So music yeah, always has a special place, you know. Well, yeah. To bring people together, and also food, food, and food, yes, plenty of, of course, good yes. food in Mauritius. So. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah. we're, we're under a considerable French influence, of course. French yes. influence, yes. And, and also Asian influence, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. So, so we yeah. have in inspired yeah. our cuisine through the yeah. French and, and the Asian, and mm. maybe probably from the African side as well. So, so yes, yeah. so really good, unique way of, of you know, could be similar to what you have in Asia, and, but it's still with a different. Mauritian touch to it. Mauritian, so yeah. Your Mauritian touch. Yeah. But but the the important thing there being, of course, is that you mentioned music as being yes. a, an important part of your religious experience. Yes. Yeah. Um, and ha and being exposed to those various different types of music yeah, yeah. and and attitudes to yeah, song. Yeah. Were, did that affect? Like it, we all know about the Australian yeah. hymns and things that we sing, and many of them are hundreds of years old. Yeah, but yeah. what what sort of music did you follow in church there? Oh, so back in Mauritius. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. It was it was most like some traditional hymns, I guess, mm. French and in Creole, and it was really good later on when when I left Mauritius to discover the the hymns. You know, um, when I was in Singapore and also mm. in Melbourne as well, the different songs as well. So mm. yeah, it was it was good to find out mm. those ones, and, mm. and and I started to to get to learn more, and so that I could play play for my friends. You no, know, can. No, praise God together through through music. So yeah. Oh right, yes, yeah, it's so very it's very important. Yeah, so yeah. where would that sit now? You you mm -hmm. look you went as though you play an instrument. Did you teach yourself an instrument or something? Did you? Yeah, so learn from friends the guitar. I learned a bit by myself, and I took some lesson. Yeah. So which is yeah. good. So yeah. um, it took me years to really be able to play full song, but but now I'm happy I'm, I'm able to do it. Thank yeah, thank God. So, it, yeah. so so if I were to play in church or, or, or mm -hmm. in other events, mm -hmm. you know, where music can add, can help us to to to, to praise god no it's, it's yeah. very it's a very powerful yeah. uh, process that's that's correct yeah. so going back to to mauritius you're you're a young mm. man or young boy at this yeah, point school yeah. what, what what was school for you there 
So yeah, it was interesting secondary school. Mm. So I was in a primary, um, Catholic primary school mm -hmm. uh, where all my siblings also went. And then in, in the state school, there were no, no catechesis because it was purely state school, public school. So, so af oh, after yeah. my confirmation in primary school, there, there were no formation at all during the whole of secondary until oh, okay. my high school. So unfortunately, that was a big you know, lack and, and yeah. In, so that's when you say no formation, that, mm. that's complete absence of, of any yes. religiosity at school yeah, at all. Yeah, in, in, in my secondary and school mm. and high school, yeah, there were nothing at all. So Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Was that a, a Catholic, expressly Catholic secondary school? No, or it was a no? public state public school. school. Public school. Yeah. And so it, none of the other religions uh, are, are taught there at no, all, no, not all in the public school. The public so school, yeah. no, no religion classes. So it's yeah. sort of sectarian it's sort of yeah, approach to secular, it. Secular. So yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, that's yeah. just, uh, that's, 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 that's interesting. That's powerful. Yeah. And it's, it's actually allowed it to be a much more peaceful place than it might have been in the I past. I guess, yeah, sure. exactly. So yeah. we could all cohabit together different faiths, yeah. different communities in, in the same school, I, I guess, yeah. And so how, how, what was your, what was your um, youth like, your, your teenage sort yeah. of years? Or you, what, what, what did you do? If you didn't have that uh, sort of anything growing out of your school mm. with your activities, what did you do? So, yeah, so it's spending time you know, um, listening to music, you know, mm -hmm. st and, and the studies as well. So uh, as a family, we were always busy. So yeah. I, I didn't have to look outside, I guess. You know, there was something at, at home with, a, with a, all the, my four siblings, so the five of us at some yeah. point in time. So you were, yeah. were always a lot of things happening, spending time with family and, 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 right. and, yeah. and also some friends as well, going out mm. with some friends. And mm. yeah, it was, 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 a, was, a, yeah, it was quite a time and just building relationships. Because I, I, I love people, so I always you know, just spend time with mm. whether it's family or, or friends, and just you know, spend wow. time. You love people, we love time too, but yeah. we're out of it at the moment. We'll be back. Sure. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. You're watching Spirit of Life, and we're speaking with Pascal Yi. Pascal, you've told us your arrival and, and uh, early life in Mauritius. Yeah. Then something happened. You went to Singapore. Yes, I did. So Why and how? Um, so yeah, for my university um, studies, I was able to, to, to go to Singapore. Mm -hmm. and, and that was a really good time when I could, you know, live independently and, and, and find out more about life and be, so that also helped me also to from staying at home where it was very challenging you know, for many mm. years um, family life um, so I was able to when I went to Singapore to find that, that space for me to, to find a bit of healing and, and also you know, especially regarding to my dad it yeah. was quite difficult at, at many times and I was able to find that space to heal and, and, and to find forgiveness and and that uh, was yeah. how, most importantly, that was yeah, the, the best part of, of coming to Singapore to have you know, that healing. In, mm. yeah. that's, that's interesting. Let's, let's just talk a little bit about healing and forgiveness, yeah. because forgiveness is a critical part of, of healing. Yes. Without talking about the specifics, what was the hardest mm. thing that, that you found going through that p forgiveness process? What did you have to do? To forgive. Yeah, there was um, a friend of my mum's. She, she mentioned something that I think really struck a chord with me. Um, she said one time, you know, if you look at your dad, you know, after all, he's he's not as bad as you think. Of course, he has done many bad things, but look at him. He's still there with the family. Mm -hmm. You know, he's still caring. He's still providing for the family. Mm -hmm. You know, even who is. No one is perfect, so yeah. he, she, she really kind of helped me to to see that in different lens, to realize you no, know, um, it could be worse, you know, and and but I think helped me to 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 be a bit to see him maybe in different lens to be a bit more compassionate. Yes. Yeah, 
and back then I, I didn't really realize it, but I think over time, but but thing, but but little seed she planted in me, I think, helped me to yeah. to see things differently and the, the seed the seed of compassion. Yeah, of compassion. Yes. I think. Yes. Yeah. And and jumping ahead a little bit, I know that you've moved into a, quite a close relationship yeah. with Mother Mary, and that's yes. probably part of the seed of that as well. Yes, it's yes, that yeah. sense of compassion. Yeah. And when you were in Singapore, you you were, you went to uni there, didn't you? I went to uni mm. there. Yeah. Mm. So it was four years of studies, and so during that time there, there was a like a small um, Catholic student group. So I was mm. able to. Mm. To have a bit of fellowship after in Mauritius, not much, so it was, it was a good time to to be able to connect, and yeah. to share about the faith, yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, with with people your you, your own age, yeah, 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 yeah yes. students, yeah. And and I, I know I asked you the question with Mauritius about the different religions, and Singapore mm. is much the same. What was the structure of yeah. the? religious groups within the university, like there was the Catholic group, mm. what, what other groups were there? Um, I think that there would be other groups, I think majority would be um, of uh, different re religions, actually. Yeah, but there would be, I think, minority of, of, of Catholics, I think. Mm. Mm. Um, but, but, but still, I didn't really like, look into other groups, but I, I think mm. there would be other groups too. But there was yeah. harmony. Um, yeah, but was yes, it was yeah. harmony. Yeah, yes. S that, that, yes. Yeah, that, that was the purpose of my question. Right. Was simply yeah, yeah. harmony, because yes. harmony is such a yeah. such a critical issue, yeah. and and yeah. sits and hovers around forgiveness as well in mm. in many spaces. Yeah. So, from a spiritual point of view, what what did Singapore look like for you? Okay, you're mixed with the mm. the Catholic group, but what did it look like for you spiritually? What was happening for you? Um, during uni, I think it was still just you know, um, going to mass and, and and meeting some of the fellow Catholics, but it was still not um, not not really life transforming for me. It was just yeah. going in with the motion, just going with the motion at that time, mm. and and especially Singapore can also be there's a lot of pressure for some people. Like yeah. we, we could we could actually fall in that in that. And there was the pressure, the rat race, you know, to, yeah. Right, yes, so, yes. So, um, th so there's a lot of pressure on, you mean on students? Yeah, on students yeah, to, yeah. To, to really to, perform, to achieve. to achieve, like, not only in their studies, but also to do extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. so that they are allowed to stay on campus. So, so that was yeah. hard to juggle, c coming from Mauritius, where it's more laid back. Yeah, yeah yes. I felt the pressure more in mm. my first four years in, in the university in, in the Singapore. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And what did you turn to when, you know, like we all do, you have that yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, what did you turn to for your support and, and uh, peace of mind? Yeah, so me and some friends, we, we enjoy music. Yeah. And, and we started to, to perform um, at the International Student Night you know, in, in, in the university. Yes. And, and since we, we first had that, that first um, time, then we, we, had a, we formed a group where we could once in a while, me to to play music. All right. So that was really right. good. I yeah. Think for me, yeah. Yeah. everybody had to study in uni, but for me, the best thing I've done was to, me and my friends to play music. Huh. Yeah. Uh, was that's <laughs> that's a very that's very interesting because yeah. as we've already addressed, yes. music is a critical part of the yeah. spiritual path as well. It's, yes. it's it's one of the the threads that holds the fabric together. Yes. Yes. That's 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 interesting, yeah. and and you've gone as you said, you've gone on to 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 develop. Yeah. some sort of skills um, yeah. with an instrument yeah. but as far as the spiritual side what was was there any spiritual component was there some longing there was or were you just buried under all of that you didn't really I think it was just buried under all of this yeah it was yeah. too busy just mm. after my first semester which was the hardest yeah. I had to work really hard to 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 make it to catch up yeah, okay. when my first semester was the hardest, and yeah. and I saw that we really, mm. really low. But I managed to every semester keep working hard. So mm. yeah, so I was too focused on you know surviving in, in university because I heard of people who had to leave and they yeah. stopped their studies. They went back to Mauritius. They couldn't finish it. So uh, I also heard of that as well. Ah, but, yes. But I knew okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll give it a go. I, I think I surrendered. I, mm. I wasn't really focusing. I wasn't very conscious about me surrendering to God, but. I guess unconsciously I did, but I just say, okay, Lord. Yeah. But it wasn't yeah. very as conscious as I can do it nowadays, but, but at least I was able to 
okay, I'll just give my best and, and, and thank God. He, he really helped me to, yes. to every semester until my end of my fourth year to, to make it and I graduated. So, yeah. It, it sounds <laughs> as though the, the, Singapore is, was quite a, an interesting little time for you, sort of yeah. coming from Mauritius yes. and then going yeah. in this expansive self-growth place mm -hmm. and then finish up, finishing up in Australia. Yeah. So I'd be very interested to explore the, the on-flow of, of your spiritual experience into Australia. Yeah. But we're out of time. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back. You're watching Spirit of Life. And today we're speaking with Pascal Yi. Pascal, we, yep. we, we went through Mauritius and Singapore. We're still mm. in Singapore in your story it, yes. as it in, unfolds towards Australia. Mm. Yeah. You had some spiritual sort of insights and experiences yes. in Singapore. Yeah. What did they look like? So after my uni, 2008, up mm. to 2014, for about six years, I was kind of not really practicing the faith mm. until in 2014, my, my younger brother, David, he invited me you know, to come to a, a Catholic meditation so by a priest. And, and yeah, that was, thank God, but he he's, he's invited me for that. Mm. And I was open enough to, to come, you know, to accept his invitation. And mm. Because that just started to have a lot of pressure at work and and, and to be able to, to have a place where I could, you know, um, maybe share that and uh, so I started to, to read um, the book called The Way by Saint Jose Maria Escriva. Ah yes, yes. And, and I always find a lot of comfort reading the chapter on Our Lady. Mm. So mm. I, I knew something was you know, stirring my heart and until the next year in 2015 that was when I hit rock bottom in, mm. in work and everything and I started to see how the life I was leading for six years away from the faith something was calling to in me in my heart like in my conscience but something i needed to change and yeah and yeah that's that was really the start of me coming back to the faith yes yeah. yes and, and how did that when you say coming back to the faith what give, give us an idea what the threads would be that mm. were sort of pulling you yeah. back because for what, six years prior to 2014, I was only going to maybe mass like once in a while or whenever I was in trouble or I needed to pray for the family. <laughs> so well, it was only good, only the bad times. Yeah. But now for the first time I was like, oh, maybe I, I, I will go back to mass and, and start to do some spiritual reading. Yeah. What was, what was the first start of, my, of me doing any spiritual reading at all for, for years? So, yes. So, so yeah, and, and, and in 2015 when it was rock bottom, um, when yeah, it was, it was so much fear and guilt in my, my mind about losing everything. And, and, and that, when I was able to, to journey with my younger brother, just, just to go to some meditation and, and go to Mass and also share with him you know, my struggles, but what led me to, to maybe want to seek God, maybe there's something he's been calling me to. Mm. Yeah, and well, when you talk about fear of losing everything, um, a bit more about that. What, what, what yeah. were you in fear of losing? What because was it? In January of 2015, I was at work and, and my boss told me something and I was really mad with him, like so angry. You know, so I went to, that, to my workshop and I kicked in an empty cotton box. And, and, me and my, the relationship between me and my workshop manager, which was really good for many yes. years, turned sour overnight. Right. And, and I was like, wow, my boss is so critical of me and, and I now the one who I used to be very close, my workshop manager, were, were not well anymore. Ah, so, yeah, I, so yeah. both my, my manager, my boss and my the other manager were kind of well, were very tense, very mm. tense. Mm. And I was like, wow, I, I might lose my job any time. Like, we're not happy with my performance and whatever. So yeah. I was like, wow, mm. wake up call, like what's going on? Like, mm. and, yeah. And when I found that anger, there was something about, now I realize there was something that was still from a past wound as, as a maybe, my mm. childhood maybe mm. but but came up that's why i'm angry with something mm. with, with injustice or rejection <laughs> so yes, so yeah, yeah so right. 
yeah. in, uh, both, both potent, yeah. potent elements. Yeah. So it was that sort of feeling of vulnerability. Yes, very, vulnerability. very vulnerable yeah. for the yeah. first time. Because I was always like strong one, helping everyone, helping my yeah. family. But for the first time, I, I, I just hit rock bottom. I was like whew, crushing down. So, mm. so yeah. And, and, and that's after a period of a relatively cruisy period, period at uni yeah. where you were surrounded yeah. by your friends and you yes. did your own sort of thing but didn't worry too much about yeah. God or anything else. No, no, exactly. Because right. me and my peers, most of them you know, were not in the faith and we would just have, you know, have fun, you know, mm. have a life of pleasure and we didn't know about God any, at all. We just, and yeah. it was so, it's so easy to be drawn by, by, by lifestyle and just to just enjoy yourself and don't care. Yeah, you no, know, have, have no real, real meaning in life and, and no real direction in life. Just mm. keep going every day until you meet an event which actually challenges your sense of self. Because yes. all of a sudden, yeah. here you were losing your cool and, yes. and, and really <laughs> putting yourself in a hot spot. Yeah, really hot because spot. of it. Yeah. yeah. So what happened with that? What happened then? And then, so from January to September, I was struggling. Months of them, I was dragging myself to work, literally mm. every day. Until like my brother told me, oh, there's a retreat happening in September. Mm -hmm. Would you be interested? I was I was desperate f to find that peace. I said yes, yes. I was desperate to find that peace. Yes. I was mentally I was not in a good spot. So so yeah, I went to that retreat and f after confession and during a night where there was the prayer ministry, um, some there was a gentleman who was praying for me and he's never met me. And he told me something that only only God will know. Yeah, uh, that's how I knew. Like, wow, I, I felt God's love. Yes, the strongest I've ever felt in my in my life. Like, on, on that night, I knew God has forgiven all, all, the, all the things, all the bad things I've done, and He He welcomed me back as in the prodigal son. You know, yeah, you know, it's it's true. How God is always there, waiting for us you know, to embrace us again, any time. So, mm. yeah. so, so that was a, that was a fairly important yes. moment for you yes. by, the, by the sound of it. Yeah. Well, that, that uh, and I think your reference to prodigal son mm -hmm. is, is a critical one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I suppose in some ways you qualified for that yes. as, as, the, as the prodigal son, as, yeah. as most of us do. Yeah. So we're almost out of time yeah. and, and I, I'd like you to come back next week yeah. to discuss this further. If that, if, would that work? Yeah. Can you do that? Yes, that'll be good. Because uh, we, can, we can follow through uh, mm. some of the things which have happened yeah. and also look at what's happened in Australia. But mm. make sure that we follow the seed that yes. you've just mentioned, mm. which was this moment of transformation yes. which occurred mm. in, in Singapore. Yeah. And it's actually grown uh, a fairly uh, f healthy. Yes. Uh, yeah, it, it is healthy, that's right. Yes, it yes, has, it's, yes. it's grown a, yeah. a healthy sort of place in life for mm. yourself in a different country. In a different country, yeah. So let's yeah. let's uh, let's have a look at that. Okay. Now you'll right. you'll come back next week? I'll see you next week. Yes. Good on you mate, thank you very All much. Right. You've been watching Spirit of Life. We will be back next week and we will be speaking with Pascal Yi. Thanks for watching and bye for now.